come together in prayer meeting and Bible study. I want to welcome those of you on your stream. We thank God for his faithfulness and for his grace. Let's pray tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you and we bless you for who you are. We ask your blessings upon your people. We pray that you would minister to us as you alone can. We pray this evening, Father, that you would anoint a worship leader, a musician, our sound, our AVM, our ushers. And Father, we pray that your favor and your grace would rest upon us. We give you glory and praise for all that you have done and will continue to do. Bless this time of worship, Father, and to you we will give the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand. He has done so much for me that I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me, and I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me, and I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. He has saved and set me free, and I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He has saved and set me free, and I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. He has filled me with the Holy Ghost, and I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He has filled me with the Holy Ghost, and I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. He has healed my body and soul, and I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He has healed my body and soul, and I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. He has done so much for me, and I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. Time he has done so much. He has done so much for me, and I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me, and I cannot tell it all. He has done so much for me. He has done so much. He has done so much for me as he has done. He has done so much for me. One more time. Yeah. He has done so much for me.
Keep on 
Don't you trust in me? How great is our God? How great is his name? He's the greatest one. Forever the same. He rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. And he said he'd never leave you. Would you trust in me?
has set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we just worship him? Can we just bless the name of the Lord, the God who sits upon the throne? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We worship your name, Lord Jesus. We worship your name and give you glory and give you praise. You are such a wonderful God, a friend who sticketh closer than a brother. We can rely upon you. Father, we bless your name this evening. We can sing of your love forever and ever and ever, Lord. We bless you for loving us when we were in our mess. We thank you this evening, Father, for touching our lives, for transforming us, Father. We give you praise and give you glory this day. For indeed, you are a good God, and we honor you, and we lift up the name that is above every other name and give you praise and give you thanks. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, the Lord, the Lord delivered him out of them all. We bless you this evening, Father, and give you praise and give you thanks. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We glorify your wonderful name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We glorify your wonderful name. You are Alpha Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. We give you all glory and praise and honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be his wonderful name. Glory be to God. Glory be to his wonderful name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for his presence with us this evening as we worship him and give him praise and thanks for his faithfulness and for his grace. He is a good God, and we just honor him and lift up his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just want to let you know this evening, last evening, uh, Sister Tessa passed away, and so at some time down the road we would have a homegoing service here. Uh, family members are gathering together to make plans. Uh, she passed the last evening, and we just want to thank God for his faithfulness and for his grace. I was over there today, this morning, visiting with them to encourage Sister Dawn and the other family members who were there that God will continue to strengthen them. Tonight we want to remember to pray for the family that God would help her children, God would give them strength during this time. She was battling and battling hard our God is still a good God. We thank God that she made her calling and election sure our passing was peaceful, and we just would meet to celebrate her life. For God is a good God. Amen. He is a good God. We want to remember the prayer of Sister Kwamina. She is in Illinois, and um, she's got some challenges that, that she's dealing with. Uh, we are trusting the Lord. She spoke with her this morning early, and... Um, spoke to her yesterday and this morning and we just want to keep her in prayer that God will continue to minister to her body my sister Edna's mom was in the hospital and um, came home but uh, she is also dealing with some challenges and we want to remember her in prayer and in all of our activities during the week that is ahead of us on Sunday we do have uh, Dr. 
Sutcliffe, who is going to be here with us. He's a gastroenterologist, and he's going to be here with us. And I want to encourage you as we come together, not only to hear the word of the Lord, but to make sure that we also are aware of some of the things that can affect us. And so I want to encourage you as we uh, come together, let us remember to keep all of these events and activities in prayer that God will bless. And please make sure that you invite as many uh, friends as possible for Sunday because uh, colon cancer is has no gender with it. It affects everybody because each of us, we have a colon and we just want to make sure that, you know, we do what we need to do. It is not a case that you've lost faith in God. Luke was a doctor and he was with Jesus. And I want to encourage you as we come together and do what God would have us to do. So tonight we want to keep all of these uh, requests in prayer. We want to remember to pray for our church that God will continue to bless in a special way. God will continue to open doors for us and minister to us as only He alone can. And so as we come together tonight, we want to ask uh, at least three of us to, to come and pray over these requests that God will work in a special way. And please remember Sister Dawn and uh, Sister Tessa's children and their family. God will help them during this time of mourning that God would minister strength and grace to them. Amen. In the dark of the midnight as I all hid my face When the storm clouds up for me and there's no hiding place Of the thunder Precious Lord, keep me safe till the storm passes by. Till the storm passes over, till the thunder sounds no more, till the clouds roll forever from the sky. storm passes by. Many times Satan whispered, there's no need to try, for there's no end of sorrow, there's no hope by and by. But I know thou art with me, and tomorrow storms never darken the skies till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe till the storm passes by when the long night has ended and the storms come no more let me stand in thy presence on the bright peaceful shore that land where the tempest never comes. Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by. Till the storm 
class is over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of the hand keep me safe till the storm passes by till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky hold me fast let me stand in the hollow of thy hand keep me safe till the storm passes by Hallelujah. glory be to god amen come sister daphne help us as we uh, keep sister dawn our family in prayer tonight and tessa's children that god would minister to them Hallelujah. One, two. Amen. Brian. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Father, this evening we come to you to worship and adore your name. Your name is awesome. You have been so faithful to us, and we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the strength that you have given to Sister Dawn over these past months. We bless and honor your name, Jesus. Thank you that she can still praise you. She can still worship you. And Lord, she is standing in the gap for those children that who don't know you. We are asking tonight, oh God, because we are so, we are so very, very sure that once we call upon your name, you are there to answer us. Lord, keep our hearts clean. Keep our minds pure. And Father, even as those children with their aunts make arrangement for Tessa, we pray that you will give them strength. We pray that you will encourage them. Even as the daughter and son are taking it so hard. But father, the mother lived a good life for them. And so therefore, oh God, we're asking you to just be with them and secure them in your arms, father. Father, we thank you that whatever their needs are, you will provide it in Jesus' name. We thank you, O oh God, for the rest of the family, the families that have to travel from New York and wherever they're coming from. We thank you that you will protect them in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O oh God, that as they go through these weeks or these days, O oh God, of planning and preparing, that they also will prepare their hearts, O oh God. And so, Father, we bless your name. We thank you that Tessa had made her calling an election sure. We bless you, O oh God, that even last Thursday, she was sure that God was with her. I bless your name tonight and worship and adore you, Father. We have nothing that we are ashamed of. We have nothing that we should say Jesus did not come through. Four o'clock in the morning, we were praying and praying and praying and worshiping you and say, Jesus, your will be done in Tessa's life. And Father, you answered us. You heard us. And so we thank you tonight. Be with us and keep us and keep them in your care. And Lord, as they look to you, may, oh God, their hearts be comforted. Only you can do that, Father. We can emphasize with them, but we cannot comfort them as you can. So we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. We need two other people. Glory be to God. 
We have Sister Kwame, we have uh, Sister Edna's mom who is uh, not well, and we want to remember these folks in prayer. God will continue to touch their bodies. Glory be to the, the, the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus, for your presence here right now. Our Father and the God, and because we know you're here, we have decided to call upon you. Father, before we even ask of anything, we just want to thank you. Thank you for every and everything. Thank you for life and even thank you for death. Because you do not want to see your children suffer and suffer. So be present, to be absent um, from the to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the life of Sister Tessa. And Father, even as we thank you for the life of Sister Tessa, we bring Sister Kwamina to you. Father God, you have been with her. You have shown us that she is your daughter. You have held her hand through very rough waters. You have not left her, and you are not going to leave, leave her at this point. Father God, we just bring her to you for the challenges that she is going through. We know you are right there with her because you have even shed your blood so that we will be healed. So, Father, we just bless and thank your name because we know that you have kept her up to this point for a reason. And so we know that you're going to come through. Father God, we bless you. Just give her that peace and comfort so whatever she's going through, she would know that you are there and you alone can help her. Father, we just thank you for Sister Edna's mom. We know that sometimes things happen and we wonder, but again, you have surprised us and you have pulled her through. We know you're not going to leave her. You're going to continue and complete the healing in her body. God, we just thank you. Not only for those two people, Father God, we have other people in here who are going through their aches and pains and going through their own. But we know that you are the only healer who can do it. Even after we have gone to the doctors, you would perfect whatever they have done. So, Father, we ask that as we are all here, that you would stop by, pass by, and just touch and heal each and everybody who's going through some form of ailment or is dealing with some kind of disease. God, you alone can do it. You are worthy. We know you can do it. And we just thank, we just bless and thank you. We stand on your word. You are such an awesome God. Father God, you are so good to us. We have nothing to give to you except praises. Even in the bad times, even in the, the times that we consider bad times, let us be able to open our mouths and praise you and say thank you, Jesus, because you have a reason for doing whatever you do. We cannot question you because we would never know why you're doing it. We only ask that you give us that faith to trust in you for whatever we did. Because, God, you are such an awesome God. We just bless your wonderful and precious name, Father. And even as we have prayed for those people who are sick, we bring lighthouse to you. God, you are such a good God. You have given us this church. We have built it on you, in you. So, Father God, because it is all about you, you are not going to leave us. You know, we know you're going to supply all our needs, all our needs. So we trust in you. Provide for each and every one of us financially so that we will be able to come back and give to, for the extension of your kingdom. Thank you, Father, for even the little that you have given to us. Teach us not to complain because some of us will complain about the jobs you have given to us. But let us remember that there are people out there who would gladly take what we have. Teach us to be appreciative of whatever you give us because 
you do not have to give us what we want because you know how to give us what we need. Thank you, Father. You are such a good God. Even as we pray for Lighthouse, we bring all our activities for the week, for the month. We put them in your hand. We ask your presence in what we ask for your presence in whatever we do, because it is only when you are here that things will be done in your name, and all the praise and glory will go to you. Lord, we thank you. We bless you for things you have done, for things you're going to do. We thank you. We do not even want to ask because you know what we need. But God, just meet us at our point of need. Touch each and every one of us present here. Touch our youths, dear God. Bring them to you. Even the ones who are thinking the church is not cool, teach them, let them know that it is very cool. Lord, because it is only when they start here they'll be able to go out into the world and do wonderful things for you. Thank you, God. You are such a good God. We have nothing to say but to bring praises and sing praises to your name. God, you are so awesome. You are so good. We thank you for your son. We thank you for all the many blessings. And we just leave everything in your hands, trusting you for whatever you have for us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Need somebody else to come remember all of those folks who are in the converts class, new believers class, those in baptism class, that God will work in a special way. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father God, I just want to come before you just to give you praise, give you thanks, give you glory because you are God above all gods and there is none else like you, O oh God. <laughs> Everything else is created by you, O oh God, and you are the creator. Everything else is an idol compared to you, O oh Lord, and I, I just want to lift up this prayer to you, O oh God, the most high God, Yeshua. Blessed be to your name forever and ever, O Lord, for who am I that you should be mindful of me? I thank you, O God, for your tender mercies are new every single morning. I thank you, O God, for your sacrifice that I could be adopted into your kingdom, O God, for I am a Gentile because of your sacrifice. Because you died on the cross and resurrected the third day, I can be called the son of God. I can be called into your kingdom, and I thank you, O God, for what you've done for me. I thank you for sparing my life two years ago, O Lord. I thank you for your tender mercies because you have a plan for me and you fashioned me inside the womb of my mother. And I thank you, God, for being so good unto me. I thank you, God, because you see my flaws and you see that I fail you every single day, but yet you stretch out your hand to me and you say, come to me, my son. And I just wanted to say thank you, God because there's no one else that can touch me the way that you do. There's no one else that can satisfy my heart for even in Psalm 42, it says that the deer pant as the deer panthers for water, so my heart, my soul pants for you, O oh God. For everything else is just an idol. Everything else does not compare to the goodness of you. It leaves me empty and only gives me temporary satisfaction, but it leaves me feeling empty without you, God. So I just bless you for being real. I bless you because you are God and everything else is, is nothing compared to you. God Almighty, I thank you once again for sparing my life for another two years because two years ago today is when I had my accident. I thank you because I'm, I could stand here and be able to open my mouth and say, God, you are worthy of praise. God, you are glorified in my life. And God, I know that I fail you every single day, but I still bless you. I still give you glory. I still give you praise. And I know that if you did it in my life, if you allowed this to happen in my life, even though... that you continue to keep Lighthouse, that we may continue to hold you in high esteem, my God, that we may continue to remember 
that you, Jesus, are the chief cornerstone, O oh God, and that all that fall on you shall be broken, but whoever you fall upon shall be shall be grinded into dust, O oh God, that we may remember that you are the one that shed your blood and that you resurrected and that no one else can bring us to the Father except you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And you, my God, leave the 99 from the flock to go search that one that walked away. And I bless you and I praise you and I thank you because you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And I am not worthy of you, O oh Lord, but I thank you because you, you said you will give me an expected end, O oh God. You said if I serve you, my God, if I, if I honor you and put you in high esteem, then you will honor me, O oh God. And if I will serve you in humility, just as Jesus did, just as Jesus being God still washed the feet of his disciples, Lord God, you made him name above all names and Lord above all lords. And I just bless you for still being that same God. I bless you because... You gave me the confidence to come up here right now. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but you today, my God, gave me the strength to do it. And I, I just give you the glory. I give you the honor. I give you the praise. And I just pray that you may just continue to keep this, this church, that you may continue to keep the service today, that when people come in here, that they may know that there is a God and that he still reigns forevermore and that he can break bonds and break chains, that he is still the same God that he could bless generations into generations into a thousand generations, Lord God, that if we serve you with all our heart and with all our mind and with all our strength, that you, my God, will provide every need. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but God delivers them out of each and every one. And I bless you, O oh God, because you use pain to, to mold us into somebody, something that you want us to be. And I bless you because you are that God. And I just pray for the rest of the service. I pray that you can continue to keep us the rest of the month with everything else, with all of our activities, and that you may continue to be number one, not only in this church, but in our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we lift all of those young converts, all those who have Going to the class, Father, we pray that your favor and your grace will continue to rest upon them and minister to them in a special way. We bind the plans and the purpose of the enemy for their lives, Father, and we release your glory and your anointing upon them. And Father, we pray that you take fear away from their hearts and from their minds. We honor you and we bless you because you're a good God. We bless your name this evening, Father. For all of the requests that went up before you, Edna's mom and all the others, Father, we thank you for your touch upon their lives. Chris' mother, we pray that you, we thank you for what you've done in her life too, Father. Continue to minister to her body in the name of Jesus. And to you we give glory and praise and honor because you are a good God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to the name of the Lord. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his Holy name. I will bless, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy done great things he has done great things he has done great things he has done great things bless his holy Bless the Lord, O oh my 
sun to the going down of the same the Lord's name is to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the Lord's name is to be praised Praise ye the Lord, praise him all ye servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. The rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The Lord's name is to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The Lord's name is to be praised. Praise ye the Lord, praise him all ye servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. 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 <clears throat> Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. 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 Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. Faith than the morning star. 
much fairer than the lily by the way. More precious than gold. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder oh, you, you are. You are than the morning star. Uh, fairer, much, much fairer than, than the lily that comes by, by the way. More precious than gold. Sweet Jesus, sweet, sweet Jesus, Jesus. What a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. More fairer, much fairer than the lily that comes by the way. You are precious, more precious. Much fairer than the lily that goes by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that goes by the way. You are precious. Hallelujah. 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 James chapter 1, verses 19 through 27. We look at a few things in James uh, chapter 1. Preparation necessary to withstand trials and temptation. In life, we will always face trials. In life, we will always uh, face temptation. But one of the things that we ought to be able to do is to overcome them, to overcome them. And God will give us all the weapons that we need to overcome trials and temptations and, and difficulties that the enemy would bring along our pathway. Let's read from James chapter 1, verse 19, verses 19 through 27. James chapter 1, 19 through 27. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But ye be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any ma a man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widow in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to look for a few moments, and I want you to interact. Preparation necessary to withstand trials and temptation. Question that I have for us tonight, is it necessary to be prepared, or is it important for you to prepare yourselves to overcome or to withstand trials and temptation? Is it necessary? And I can't even hear you. I don't even know if you're here. Is it necessary? It is necessary because for each of us, we face challenges and temptations every day in our lives. But we ought to be prepared for it because 
The enemy is no respecter of persons. And when we talk about the enemy, we're talking here about the devil. He is no respecter of persons. And therefore, all of us need to be prepared because it will come. Job had no, in, no indication on, from anyone that the enemy was going to come after him. The Bible says there was a day when the sons of God were presenting themselves before God and the devil came among them. He came among them and God started to talk to him. And he said, the only reason that Job is serving you is because of all of the good things you're doing for Job. But if you should take all these things away from Job, Job is going to curse you to the face. And God said, Job is not going to do that. God allowed the enemy to come after Job. But if Job did not have what it takes to withstand the trials and the temptation, Job would have been overrun or conquered by the enemy. And so each of us, every day we face trials and temptation, but God can give us the grace that we need to overcome these temptations and these trials. Abram was a man that God said, I'll make you the father of many nations. And when God made that promise to Abram, he had no children. He was far advanced in years. And then God came through in a special way and granted him a son. Of course, you know the situation where his wife, Sarah, got into all kinds of trouble. And Hagar and her son came through that arrangement. But that was not what God was talking about. But then the time came and God blessed them with, I, with Isaac. And then God came to Abram and said, Abram, I want you to sacrifice this very son that I've given unto you. And sometimes we think that, it was, that God was tempting, but God wasn't tempting him. God was testing him to see whether he would sacrifice what was so important to him. And sometimes God brings us to a place where he would say, this what is very important to you. Let me see if it is more important to you than, than I am to you. And sometimes we allow things and situations and people to become more significant in our lives than God. But when Abram was willing to do what God wanted him to do, God said, Abram, I know for sure that there is nothing that you are going to withhold from me. And God said to him, turn around. I have already prepared a sacrifice, a, ra a lamb caught in the ticket. And so we all face trials and temptations and, and, and testings. James says in verse 19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to, to, slow to speak and slow to wrath. So preparation number one, be what? Preparation number one? Be, be preparation quick, number one, be, be quick, quick, quick to, to hear, hear the, word the word of God. Be quick to hear the word of God. One of the things we need to make sure, brethren, that we hear the Word of God. Because if we hear the Word of God, the Word of God will help us uh, to conduct ourselves uh, appropriately. So there's a couple of things on the preparation. Number one, be quick to hear the Word of God. It says, A, be slow to speak. Not every time we need to speak. Not every time we need to speak. There are times we need to be quiet before the Lord. There are times we just need to be quiet before the Lord. There are times even in situations that we face that we need to be quiet without even saying anything. Jesus, when he was led as a lamb to the slaughter, the Bible says he was dumb before his shearers. He did not utter a word. Jesus could have said something to them. He could have, he could have called for legions of angels to take care of that situation. But he remained quiet. One of the things the Word is saying unto us, be slow to speak. Sometimes we speak more than we listen. If we listen, we will learn a lot of things before we speak. There are some scriptures I will give to you later on. It also says, uh, as we're dealing with temptations and trials, uh, be slow to wrath and anger. Don't easily fly off the handle. Don't be easily upset and be angry. That can lead to all kinds of behavior and all kinds of stuff. So be slow to speak. Be slow to wrath and anger. There are times the enemy will provoke you. He will provoke you even in your own home. You could be provoked by the enemy using some family members member. But one of the things that you need to understand. That not every situation you need to engage with your mouth 
you can talk to God and God will take care of that situation better than you can deal with it. Sometimes I wonder why we think that we got to fight the battle when God wants to fight the battle. People might think that you're stupid not to say anything. No, 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 you're not stupid. There are some scriptures that will tell you that a wise, a still tongue. And sometimes uh, I was listening to a particular uh, speech last evening. And the person who was making the speech said something that will come back to haunt him. Be slow to speak, be slow to write, and be slow to anger. Look at the other one. See. Put aside all filthiness. That's what the verse says from verse 19 to 21. Put aside all filthiness. Wait for my beloved brethren. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. Swift to hear the word of God, slow to speak, slow to write. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And so Paul says that... James says that the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. In other words, uh, getting upset and angry over a situation is not going to cause God to come and deal with the situation. He says, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. In other words, uh, my anger is not going to release the righteousness of God in a situation. But if I am calm in that situation and saying, God, I need you. To take charge of this situation. Sometimes uh, we take charge of it when God is saying, look, give it to me. Peter says, casting all your cares on Jesus, he cares for you. And whatever trials, whatever temptation, whatever difficulty you face in life, if you cast it on God, God has the capacity and the ability to take care of it. Yeah, he has the ability to take care of it. Let's look at the other one. Receive the word of God. With humility, receive the word of God with humility. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. And so James is saying, look, receive the word of God with humility. Sometimes people hear the word of God and they know that God is talking to them. But then they think, it's for somebody else. No, no, no. Every time you come into the presence of the Lord, God has something in the word for you to help you move from one level to another level in his grace. And as you open your heart and your mind and your spirit to God, God is going to reveal more of himself to you. So you receive the word of God with humility. Let's look at some of the scriptures that we have before us tonight. Proverbs 15.31. Proverbs 15.31. And Proverbs 18, 15, and Ecclesiastes 5, 1. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. What, what Solomon is saying, look, you hear, the, you, you hear the reproof. In other words, God is saying something to help you to develop. And if you, if you humbly submit to what God is saying, God says... You would abide among the wise. You would abide among the wise. The, the, the ear that hear it, my ears that hear it, the reproof of life abideth among the wise. Look at 18.15. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, in that I am seeking after God, I'm seeking after God, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge in all our getting we need to get understanding we need to get wisdom so that god can can use us in ways beyond our own imagination and so preparation number one be quick to hear the word of god but be slow to speak be slow to wrath be slow to anger put aside all filthiness because that stands in the way of god blessing and doing what he wants to do in your life ecclesiastes 5 and 1 thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Now, this is a very funny and exciting verse. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Maintain your balance when you are in the house of God. Maintain your balance when you are in the house of God and be more ready to hear what God has to say than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. 
to them, doing evil is a way of life. But the word says, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear. Maintain your balance. Maintain your balance. Let's go to preparation number two. As we face trials and temptations, how we deal with it. Be a doer of the word and not only a listener. Now one responsibility, we have a responsibility to hear the word of God. But over and beyond hearing the word of God, we've got to do what the word of God says. We can't afford to be like the man who, he, who, who looks at the mirror, sees himself. When he leaves the mirror, he doesn't know what he looks like. And so what we ought to be able to do is not just hear the word, but we've got to do the word. Because hearing the word is one thing. But the thing that makes sense is when I am actually living out the word that I hear. It's very important because we become very religious. We become just, we be just going through the motion as it were. If just hearing and the hearing is not doing anything to the living. And so my hearing ought to affect my living. If I hear the word of God, the word of God ought to do something in my heart and in my life. I ought to be different because I hear the word of God. And because the word of God is powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword and it has the capacity to change my direction, my life would be different because I'm not only hearing the word, but I'm doing what the word says. Question, is it necessary to do the word? Is it necessary or to live the word? Or is it just good for us to hear the word? Just hear it. Has no impact on us. Just hear it. You sit, you hear it, you leave, and you go and behave like an ungodly person who've, who've never heard anything about Jesus Christ. No. The word must change us. The word must change us. The word says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The word in my heart gives me the capacity and the ability not to sin against God. The more of the word that I have in my system, in my spirit, it helps me to withstand the trials and the temptation that the enemy would present to me and cause me to, to stand even in a difficult situation. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Glory be to the name of the Lord. The, the psalmist, I think it's Solomon or David, one of the two of them, can't give it the exact, but it says, Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed there to according to the word of God. Where am I going to find, how can I cleanse my way? I can cleanse my way or my attitude or my conduct or my behavior by taking heed to the word of God. So it goes to the point that I have not only to listen to the word, but I also have to obey the word and practice the word on a daily basis. Amen. Yes. Psalms 199. Where little shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Can you give me the amplified translation of this verse? How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed and keeping watch on himself according to your word, conforming his life to it. In other words, my life is conforming to the word of God. The word of God becomes the, 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 that, that, that becomes the foundation of my life. It guides me, directs me in everything that I do. Is that true? It guides me, directs me. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed and keeping watch on himself. In other words, I got to be watchful. It was Paul who says, when I'm done preaching, when I'm done teaching, when I'm done singing, when I'm done worshiping, when I'm done doing all of these wonderful things in the house of God, I bring my body under subjection in that my body doesn't control my spirit. My spirit controls my body. Lest when I'm done doing all of these wonderful things to God, I become a castaway or a reject. So he says, I bring my body under subjection. In other words, uh, I submit myself, my body, my will to the will of God so that he is in control and is in charge. Yes. Amen. So we got to be a doer of the word, not only a listener only. Get beyond hearing and knowledge because we can hear, we can have knowledge. Uh, one of our members would say to me from time to time that there is a man that he grew up with. The man could, the man could quote all the scriptures that you can possibly think about. And he would quote scriptures to, to many of us. But in terms of doing, he's not doing anything in relation to what 
he heard. Imagine this man standing before Jesus on that day. I read the word. I could quote the scripture. But his life is contrary to the word of God. We've got to go beyond hearing it. We've got to go beyond listening to it. We've got to go beyond just the knowledge of it. To the level where we live the word of God. That makes the difference in our lives and gives us the power to overcome the enemy and to defeat the plans of the devil. So get beyond hearing and knowledge. Be, be careful to do what? Not to forget the word of God. Be careful not to forget the word of God. Because when I forget the word of God, I expose myself to the plans of the enemy. Because if I remember the word of God, when I'm in a difficult situation, I can use the word of God in that situation. I don't know about you, but I've gone through situations and challenges in life where I had to call upon the word. I had to hold on to the word when everything else around me was uh, just falling apart. I had to hold on to the word of God because that was my sure foundation to overcome the situation before me. And each of us would face some situation in life where you've got to say, God, this is your word. This is your word. Your word is not going to change. You honor your word above your name. You honor your word above your name. Yes, the situation before me looks challenging, but God, it is your word I'm holding on to. I'm holding on to your word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. Will never pass away. Will never pass away. Because God can't lie. God cannot lie. So be careful not to forget the word of God. Look at the other one. The one who receives the blessing from God is a hearer and a doer. Hearers and doers are blessed by God. If I hear the word and I do the word, then God is going to bless me. The hearers and the doers, it means that you, you're not only hearing the word, but you're doing what the word says, and you're positioning yourself for God's favor and God's blessing to be upon your life. Once you hear the word and you do what the word says, look at Peter. All night, they went out on the sea to fish. They caught nothing. And Jesus came and he said to them, launch out in the deep. And Peter said, Master, you, are not, you, you don't even know what you're talking about. All night, we were out here trying to catch fish and we caught nothing. Then Peter said, nevertheless, Lord, at your word, I am going to... Launch out. And the word says, as Peter heard the word of Jesus, and not only heard the word, but as he decided to obey the word, the Bible says his ship started, the ships started to break because they caught so much. When we hear the word of God and do the word of God, we are positioning ourselves for God's favor and blessings upon our lives. If you want to rob yourself of the blessing of God, just hear the word and don't do it. But if you want the favor of God upon your life, hear the word and do the word and watch God do the rest for you. Watch God do the rest for you. So hearers and doers are what? Blessed by God. Let's go to some of the references that we have. Read for me. Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, is talking about being obedient to God. Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. That's a very serious scripture. I mean, I can say things. I can get involved in church activities. And that's something that we got to be very watchful and be, be very careful about. Because we could, we could get ourselves so immersed in activities. And we miss the very presence. And we miss the spirit of God. And we miss the very power of God. And miss the, and miss the whole concept of obeying God. And activities take over rather than obedience. When activities take precedence over obedience, then we're in trouble. Obedience ought to take precedence over activities. Yes, we thank God for activities, but activities not, would not cause God's anointing to fall upon us. Our obedience to God's word will cause God's anointing to rest upon us. I wonder if you understand what I'm saying to you. You sure you think you understand what I'm saying to you? 
that I can get myself in all kinds of activities. I come here, cut the grass. I come here, sweep the church. I come here, put flowers in the church. I come here, I paint the church. I come here, and I do all the things that, I, that need to be done around the church. But, but, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So what is important in the verse? My obedience to God's word. Not the activities. We're not diminishing the significance of activities or the importance of activities. But we're saying we've got to transcend the activities and get to the point where we obey the word. Next scripture. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven... The same is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus was asked the question, but who is your brother? Who is your sister? Who is your mother? And the whole thing, like if you had to, it was just a, a family of fear. Jesus said, no, this is not the situation. Let me, let me define what I mean, Jesus said. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and the same is my sister, and the same is my mother. You could say, and the same is my father, too. So the concept there is obeying God's will, obeying God's word. And God's will is God's word. Because God does not veer away from his word. He doesn't move away from his word. His word is his will. It is what God said to us that we ought to do. His will, his will is his word. Look at Luke 6, 46. And why? Call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Jesus said to these religious people, why call me Lord, and you don't do what I say? In other words, he's saying it makes no sense that you call me Lord and you're not doing what I say. The only way calling me Lord would mean anything is when you are obeying my word. Whosoever cometh to me, and heareth my saying, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Verse 48. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and lay the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. You see, you, you, we, we, cannot, uh, we cannot replace or substitute obedience. The man built his house. He that heareth uh, the word and he builds his house upon the rock and all the trials and the temptations and the difficulties came against him and his house was still standing because it was on the foundation Jesus Christ, the solid rock. Whatever we do in life, if whatever we are building is not on the Lord Jesus Christ, when the storms of life come, it's going to fall apart. It's going to fall down. Only what is on the Lord Jesus Christ is going to stand. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that, with, that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. You can't build a house on something that is not solid. If you're going to build a house, the foundation got to be solid. Because life is so funny that things do happen in life. And therefore, you have to have a solid foundation. And God says, the man who is not going to pay attention to what God is saying, and he's going to seek to build his life away from God, when the storms of life come to him, his building is going to fall because it does not have foundation. It doesn't have foundation. I've seen people try to build their lives outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when trouble come along their pathway, they keep bawling. But if they build on the foundation, who is Jesus Christ, whatever storm that will come your way, your building is going to stand. Your life is going to, to stand because it is on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you know these things, Happy are you if you do them. If you know these things, John says, happy are you because you know them. In other words, you obey the word. God says your, your life is going to be happy. Go to Romans 2 and 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. 
God says not only the, hearer of the, the hearers of the law are going to be justified. One day Jesus rebuked the Pharisees because they saw the disciples doing something on the Sabbath day. And they said that these men should not do this on the Sabbath day. And Jesus said, which one of you, if your cow fall into a trench, King James said ditch, but fall into a trench or a canal, and the cow is there and is going to drown on the Sabbath day, would you turn around and save your cow? And when Jesus said that to the Pharisee, he could not say anything to the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we lay importance on things that God does not consider important. And what God does not regard as important, we ought not to lay emphasis on, 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 on something like that. Jesus another time said to, said to them, you wash the cup clean on the outside. When you look at the cup on the outside, it is wonderful. It is so clean. But he said on the inside, full of dead men's bones, a whitewashed sepulchre, meaning a whitewashed tomb with dead men's bones on the inside. And he says we ought not to be like that because our lives should be on the Lord Jesus Christ. We should be obeying the word. But not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified before God like you've never committed any sin before because the Lord Jesus Christ, as a result of his death on the cross, he justifies us. And so we stand before God justified like we have never committed any sin all because of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful thing. It is a wonderful thing. Look at preparation number three preparation number three it says control your tongue 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 look at verse number 26 it says if any man among you verse 26 in the text if any man among you religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. The thing about Christianity is not about talk, it's about living. It's not about talk, it is about living. Because talk is cheap. It is about living. Control your tongue. Control your tongue. And there are three areas there. One of the things we've got to avoid if we, if we, if we want to overcome, if we want to be prepared to conquer all of these uh, temptations and trials and difficulties that will come along our pathway, God says, number one, we've got to control our tongue. We've got to avoid things like gossiping. We've got to avoid lying. We've got to avoid murmuring. We've got to avoid suggestive and off-colored talk. And sometimes uh, we can get tied up with these, with these things. And so it is our responsibility under God to control, to control the town. Jesus said, it is not what goes into man that defiles the man, but is that which comes out of the man that defiles the man. Not what goes into the man, but what comes out of the man defiles the man. And therefore, our tongue, we've got to bring it under the subjection of the Holy Spirit so that whatever we do, when we get up to speak, we edify our hearers. Can we control the tongue? Oh, you are quiet on this one. Can we control the tongue? Of course we can control the tongue. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. Not what comes in, but that which goes out. Now look at the scriptures that we have. Titus chapter 3, verses one, verse 1 and 2. Titus chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawler but gentle showing all meekness unto all men. Can we do verse number two? Is it possible that we can live according to verse number two? Look at what verse number two says. Speak evil of no, no man. man. Is it possible for you 
to do what verse number two is saying? Oh, y'all not talking to me. Everybody quiet. Is it possible to speak evil of no man, but to be no brawler in that we are not from the street? In Guyana, we call it the long yard or the tenement yard. You know, we're not from that place. But God has saved us. And one of the things that salvation does for us, it, it brings about a refining of our lives. Yes, we might have come from a, a background of brawling and all that kind of stuff. But the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That God has the possibility to clean us up, to mold us, to shape us, and to make us into a vessel of honor, beauty, and dignity. Go back to verse number two. Why are you running away from verse number two? To speak evil of no man, to be no brawler, but gentle. Is it possible that we can be gentle? Is it possible that we can be gentle? Showing all meekness unto all men. That we can be kind. We can manifest the attributes of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Thank God that it is possible that we can. Or when we, we just waited to hear something funny but one of our brethren and the next thing you know we say, man, I know this person was a crook and a rogue. You know, I know this person was a crook and a rogue. That's why the word says be quick to hear the word of God and be slow, be slow, be slow. Let me tell you a story that happened one time. A young woman accused a pastor of inappropriately touching her. I think it was a little bit more than touching. But she said it was, the pastor did all of these things, and she was so convincing, so convincing. But when you move in the power of the Holy Spirit, no matter how people might be convincing with their mouth, you got to go beyond the mouth and connect with the Holy Ghost so that God would give you discernment to recognize and to hear the voice of the Lord. And God in that meeting said something, and when God spoke and then she was cornered in a question. She was in love with the pastor. The man was married. He was married at his wife. He wanted not, no, nothing to do with her. But she felt that the only way she can destroy him is to say these things about him. And some people believed it. But then when the Holy Spirit came in the room and she started to manifest in the room and the demons were cast out and she became straight with God, she started to weep and wail before God. Then she said, these are the things I did. None of what I said was true. None of what I said was true. You remember some Wesleyan say that Pastor Cameron took a million dollars from the church? Yeah, I remember the church never had a million dollars. When I came to that church, the first time they ever crossed 500,000 is when I became the pastor of the church. That's the first time they crossed $500,000 in the offering for the year. And people believe that Pastor Cameron took a million dollars from somebody who never had a million dollars. And they knew that church never had that kind of money. How you can take the money? Myself and the treasurer had to be really tight to get that kind of money because we had a system where two people had to sign a check. Two people had to go to the bank to withdraw money. So if two people got to go, it got to be the pastor and somebody else who was a signatory to the account got to go to the bank. But people don't try to get to the bottom of truth because a gossip is something, I mean, people go after it. People don't fly after the truth. They fly after things that are not important. And so the word says, control your tongue. Go to the other scripture that we have. And so one of the things we've got to be very careful is that don't allow you know, ourselves to get tied up. Titus 2 says, look, be gentle. Look at verse 6 in James chapter 3 and verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. The tongue is a, is a small member, but is fire. It can cause such a fire. 
can cause such a problem. And God says, look, you know, we got to control the town. We got to control it. Let's go to James uh, 4 and 11, and we'll just take those other scriptures and we'll be done. James 4, 11, you have the, the paper, please follow the other scriptures. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. But a judge of the law. Speak not evil of one another, brethren. Our responsibility is to make sure that we lift each other. We lift each other up. We lift each other. We lift each other. We might not agree on everything, but we can lift each other up. We can lift each other up before God. Keep thy tongue from evil, and, and thy lips from what? Speaking, speaking guile. guile. Keep thy... And so th these are things that will help us to prepare because temptations and trials and all of these things are going to come to us, but we must be able to conquer them. And these are strategies that we can use uh, to conquer them. Look at Psalm 34, 13. He that keepeth his... Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Proverbs 13.3, sorry, Proverbs 13.3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that open wide his lips shall have destruction. You see, why well, you got to keep quiet sometimes? Uh, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, uh, but he that openeth, his, openeth wide his lips uh, shall have destruction. Go to the next one. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. But we don't want trouble. And therefore, one of the things we've got to do is to be wise. Whatever we do. Look at 1 Peter 3 and 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. And his lips that they speak no guile. If I want to love life, if I love life and I want to see good days, uh, I must refrain my tongue from evil and my lips uh, that they speak no guile. So these, this is a great passage of scripture, very sensitive, descriptive passage. In no certain terms, there are several preparations that must be made in order to overcome temptation and, and trials. And if we do, God will bless us. Please look at number four. Practice pure religion. Visit the orphans and widows in their affliction and keep yourself from being polluted by the world. We can keep ourselves from being polluted by the world. You have the paper before you? Please read those other scriptures and see what they mean. Amen. Amen. Just want to remind you that um, on uh, Saturday, the dumpster is outside. I, if you came in the parking lot, you would notice the dumpster is out there. And Saturday, we want to be able to make sure we clear the entire um, loading area. But the dumpster is here. If you got time tomorrow or Friday during the day, you can join us here. So whatever time, so that we can start getting rid of some of the things that we don't need over there so that our entire air could be cleared. And even if we don't get everything on Saturday, the dumpster is still here, but we want to make a, a, make a dent on what we have over there so that we can clear up that place and prepare it for the bold ministry so that the fellowship hall will be what it is, fellowship hall. And bold would be where bold is supposed to be bolding. Amen. So I just want to encourage you that we have the dumpster here, and so we want to cut up that big tree that we have at the back that's lying there and to cut it up and to get it in the dumpster. We'll have a chain, some chainsaws here on Saturday so we can cut it up and get things together. It was so nice to all of us to make sure that I put the dumpster just close to the loading area so that even if we got rain, you could stand up on the loading deck and just throw the stuff in the dumpster. I was thinking about you. See how nice I am? Thinking about you so that I don't want you to go out in the rain or anything like that. And so that we can take care of our business. Amen. And please be reminded that uh, on Friday all the ministries will meet. And on Sunday, which is first Sunday in May, what? 
we've gone very swiftly. May. Well, you know what goes on in May. Boy, I hear the, on the other side, Mother's Day, May is the pastor's birthday too. Amen. And so we really, we're really moving ahead, and I just want to encourage you. So Sunday's first Sunday, and this communion Sunday, but we will have uh, Dr. Sutliff talking to us, and we just want to encourage you as we come together in the presence of the Lord, that God will continue to help us and minister to us. Amen. Let's, let's pray. We want to thank God for those on Facebook and those on Ustream who are still with us. Let's pray tonight. Father, we ask your blessings on your people as they will leave, you will go with them to their homes. We ask your blessings on the offerings that people have given. And Father, we pray that you minister to those who are with us on Ustream as well as on Facebook. We ask that you continue to minister to your people and keep us safe. We thank you for all the prayers that went up tonight. Thank you for the answers, Father. And to you we give glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. One, two. And praise God. God bless you. Amen. One, two.